Hello, my name is James Cook. I'm a professor of social science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and we're here together for the undergraduate social networks course at UMA. Today I want to do a walkthrough of an assignment uh, that I've adapted from uh, James Moody's family network assignment uh, that he does uh, at Duke University. Uh, I want you to begin by consulting the uh, Derek Hansen et al. text here. I want you to look at page 34, 35, and 36, uh, where edge lists, matrices, and sociograms or network graphs are discussed as three different ways of representing a network. And I want you to represent a particular network, your family network, in these three ways. In perhaps our first uh, major substantive network assignment of the semester. Because it's the first semester, excuse me, the first assignment in which we're working through this example, I want to walk through what that example might look like. And so here I am in Microsoft Word, and I'm wanting to create an edge list. Now, I'm not going to do all the details uh, of this assignment. I'm not going to write it up in a nice format that includes full paragraphs, complete sentences, uh, a, a discussion uh, of the answers to uh, question three regarding how many people are included, uh, how many names there were that we didn't know. I'm just going to go through the core mechanics that you need to work through in order to get your edge list in order to think about converting that to a matrix, and then from a matrix moving to a sociogram. So, an edge list. In this case, we are always starting with ourselves, because we're talking about our family networks. So, I'm going to start by thinking about, uh, through a snowball sample, uh, myself, and naming all the people who are either my parent, uh, my child, uh, my spouse, or my partner, including people who are parents and children who may no longer be living. So I'm going to talk about the connection between myself and a mother. I also have a family connection to a father. Uh, I have children, a son, and I'm not naming them. You don't have to name them either, <coughs> but there they are. Um, and then if I am also married. And I'm just gonna call these people mother, father, son, daughter, and wife. Is this everybody who is a parent, a child, or a partner slash spouse? Yes for me. That is step one uh, in my family network. But it doesn't stop there. Because I want you to go out to a distance of two. These are people at a distance of one from me in the family, but there are people who are out there who are connected to these people. My mother had a mother and a father. My father had a mother and a father. And my mother has a child who is James's brother. My father also is the father of my one brother. And that's the first brother. I actually have two brothers. So I'm going through and I'm listing these individuals. Right. Um, now, 
I have a wife, and my wife has a father. And so forth. So, if I'm thinking about that, then I think I may be finished. I'm going to go through and I'm going to check. This is going to include my two brothers, it's going to include my wife's father and my wife's mother. But not their father and mother, because that would be a distance of three, and not a distance of two in the network. And we're only moving out to a distance of two steps from the core person. For me, that's me. For you, that's you. I now have an edge list. If you look at Hansen, pages 34 to 36, that's what an edge list looks like. How many people do I have in this edge list? Well, I have myself, my mother, my father, my son, my daughter, my wife, my two grandparents on my mother's side, my two grandparents on my father's side. Oh, that's 10 already. I have two brothers and I have my wife's father and mother. That's 14. So what can I do with that? Well, I can create now something called a matrix. And that matrix, if I have a small enough um, matrix, I might want to think about inserting a table. Uh, going in Microsoft Word to Insert Table, clicking on that, and clicking on Insert Table, I can name a number of rows and number of columns. Uh, always take the number of nodes you have and add one if you want to have a row and a column for labels. And I could try to uh, work with that. When I do that, I'm going to find that uh, the labels are going to be a little tight. James, mother, James, excuse me, uh, father, uh, James, daughter, so on. You see I'm running out of room, James's son. So I have two possible solutions, James's wife. Now we have mother's mother. I'm not going to be able to fit everything in, am I? Okay. I could abbreviate each of those uh, row, or excuse me, those are column uh, labels. And then, of course, I also have row labels, which should be the same because I'm going to create an adjacency matrix going back to chapter one in our Perl textbook. I could try to abbreviate them, make them smaller, and then they're harder to understand. I could do something else in Microsoft Word. Uh, how can I delete that? Like so. I could try to insert uh, I need to go to table and click Excel spreadsheet. Insert a whole spreadsheet in here. And there's a magic to it. Okay. Once I do that, I can enter the same values. James, James's mother, James's father, uh, James's son, James's wife, James. Is that everybody? Mother's mother, mother's father. But look what's happening as I go. It's scrolling through, and I have scroll bars here. I can expand the spreadsheet out somewhat. Whoops. Perhaps I would be ill-advised to do such a thing. <laughs> I think I was ill-advised to do such a thing. Um,
but I can go through two modes there we go in which if I click off the uh, if I click on the uh, spreadsheet uh, it allows me to scroll through uh, mother's father father's mother father's father who else did I have wife's ah. James's brother one James's brother two wife's wow mother and wife's father wow, I finally got through all of them I think let me check Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh oh. Who did I forget? Well, I can click off of the spreadsheet and it becomes this static thing. Did I. Okay, there's me, the mother, the father, the son, the daughter, my wife, one, two, three, four grand parents, and then brother one, brother two, father and mother. Who did I leave off? Did I? Let's go check. There's me. My mother, my father, my son. How could I have left out my daughter? Uh, fairy gauche. I'm going to insert a column. See, I can do spreadsheet things here. James's daughter. Of course, I should never forget her. I just got distracted. Now I can copy these, and I can do lovely things like as I could in a regular spreadsheet, I can paste the transpose, which means that the uh, column headers now become row headers. Lovely. I can include all this information here for a matrix, and yet it will fit inside a word processing document. And in order for me to review it, to, for me to grade your work, if you have a larger family, and you may, uh, then, boom, uh, I can just click on it, and I'm ready to look at what you've got. I recommend uh, this strategy rather than inserting a table directly in Word. Insert instead a spread uh, sheet, an Excel spreadsheet, using your Word document. Everybody should have access to Microsoft Office therefore to Microsoft Word because you need Microsoft Office in order to run Node Excel, which is coming soon. So what do we do now if we want to take this edge list and we want to convert it into a matrix? Well, let's think about it. Each of these edges is an affirmation of the existence of a tie. In terms of a matrix, a tie is shown to exist with the number 1 meaning yes, it's there, or 0 meaning no, it's not there. And what is the tie here? The tie is either parent to child or spouse or partner. So for a matrix, therefore, I would say So we can read it that James is not I'm, I'm not my own parent or child or spouse but my mother and father are my son my daughter and my wife are okay my mother's mother is not my mother and neither is my mother's father or all these other individuals I am not directly tied to them by that standard on the other hand my mother is tied to me. I am her child. She is my mother. Um, my mother and my father are not spouses. So I can go ahead and I can say that that's a zero. And my mother is not my son's mother. 
So I'm going to say that's not true. And that is an in-law relationship between a wife, my wife and my mother. Now she is related to her mother and father, but not to my father's mother and father. Her relationship is there for my two brothers, brother one and brother two, but not to my wife's mother and father. Now I can keep going ahead. I can head through and do this for all of my other relations. Uh, and I can say there's a one here and a zero here. Zero here, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero. And I can move on and fill that matrix in until every row and every column is filled with zeros and ones. Zero meaning no tie, one meaning an actual tie. I'm going to stop here for this example because you don't need to watch me do that. Uh, it won't take long if I think about it carefully. It might take about a half an hour, but you don't need to see that on video. That's what a matrix looks like, and it's a mathematical object. Okay, now we can do a third thing. Uh, we can create a picture, and that picture is sometimes called a network graph. Uh, it is sometimes called a sociogram, and those two are synonymous. They're, they're synonyms of one another. And I could take the information in the edge list, which tells me that in each case that there's a tie. Okay, each is a statement of a tie, and I could represent it using the graphical ways we think about nodes. And... Um, the graphical ways we think about ties as dots and lines. So I could uh, use under the insert tab in the, the top bar, I could look at shapes. And oh look, here's a wonderful shape. It's an oval. And I could draw one. And then I could type in it my name. If I really wanted to be nice, I could make that bigger so that it's easy to read. It's not essential, but it would be nice. Okay, well, I'm not the only person in this universe. I can move this around. I have, oh, I could copy it and paste it. Okay, control C and control V in Windows, and I could Double click on that to then enter text. James's mother. Uh oh, it's too big text for that little tiny space, so I'm going to make it smaller until it fits. Uh, I could also say don't add a space between paragraphs of the same style in the paragraphs option. Huh, and then I could make it a little bigger again all these little tricks that you could have, but mostly what you need is patience. Working with the insert shapes option, cutting, control C and control V, pasting, I have another node over here, and that is not James's mother, but James's father. And I could then insert another shape. Now, do I do an arrow? Uh, no, because in this case, the kind of tie that we're talking about is one where if you have a parent-child relationship, well, you can't possibly have a parent-child relationship one way. If you have a spouse relationship or a partner, if, if you're not married, then that really also goes both ways by necessity. So I'm going to show a line, a very small line. Okay, maybe I want to make it bigger in some way. Format, I right clicked and I format shape. I'm going to make it bigger. You can look at the width. Oh, that's nice and big. Now I'm going to draw it out a little bit more. And all of a sudden I have a tie. Great. 
I'm going to control C and control V to paste it. Now I can move those dots along, which show me where the ends of the line are going to be. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, oh, make that a little bit more complete. I have a simple sociogram. Again, this is just the beginning. This is not my whole network, but this is showing the relations between nodes in my familial network uh, as a network graph or a sociogram. These are the three tasks that I want you to complete uh, labeling each node in the second step of your uh, homework to create your own depiction of your actual family network. Uh, be sure to save it as a, a Microsoft Word, Word processing document and then go to Blackboard and attach the file uh, in the assignment section for assignment number three. If you can do that work, and you can see with a little bit of practice, it won't take long. Uh, this is an assignment which will get you familiar with the representations of different networks using uh, social relationship you're familiar with. And I hope this means that in future weeks, when we get a little bit more complicated in thinking about networks, that uh, you'll feel comfortable enough to move forward. Please do get in touch with me if you have any questions about representing uh, social networks in these ways. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you have to offer and to looking at your assignments. Have a good week.